Kansas City is having such a moment. Like ASAP Rocky is here shooting a music video. What what is it like to be in the world that you're in as Kansas City has become such a cultural hotspot seemingly out of nowhere? Yeah, it, in a way, it kind of feels like such a told you so moment because all of those years of you need to move, you need to move. And I'm like, no, there is a good reason for me to be KC based. I'm not necessarily, I always tell people, I'm not a local artist. I'm a Kansas City-based artist. There's a mindset difference of that. And because of that mindset difference, I've been able to work with ASAP, Monica, Bel Air, The Royals, Wendy's, Jose Cuervo. Like, I've been able to do these big projects because I'm ready and I'm here. Hi there. Welcome to the Connecting KC podcast. I'm Rachel Kilmer, also known as Rach the Realtor on the internet, where I love, well, connecting all things KC. I'm a metro area real estate agent, retired sports reporter, and mom, and probably too old to call myself a TikToker, but honestly, that's how we got here. You can learn more at www.rachetherealtorkc.com. But this show is all about introducing you to all of the movers and shakers, interesting people, heartfelt stories, and funny quirks that make this vibrant community home. So let's get right to it with today's episode of Connecting KC. Welcome into today's episode of Connecting Kansas City. I am so excited to dive into this one. Today we are joined by Whitney Manny, a Kansas City Mo native, award-winning fashion and textile designer. She graduated from the Kansas City Art Institute in 2012 with a BFA in fibers. And with the desire to create art in a wearable format, Manny creates garments and textile designs under her independent label, Whitney Manny. Creating a narrative between color and pattern is a signature of Manny's work. And she says, my job is not done until everybody in the world believes fashion is art. Whitney, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it so much. Your designs are so distinct and it is like such a brand. And I feel like it, I don't know you yet, but we're going to get to know each other here, but I feel like it represents you so well. Have you always had such a like strong sense of what your style is, even when you were little? Um, I don't. Yes. And no. Um, when my mom was in charge of dressing me still, <laughs> definitely clear, definitely distinct. But you know, I tell people a lot of times, you know, growing up in the Midwest in the 90s, early 2000s, there's not a lot of fashion to go off of. You know, the internet was not happening. I had Bannister Mall, um, JCPenney, Gorman. So she did She did what she could and she did a lot. Uh, I always looked pretty fresh and put together. So um, it was kind of around that age where, you know, you're kind of in charge of yourself. You know, when your mamas are just like, okay, now your hair and you're picking out your clothes and all that stuff, that's up to you, kiddo, like figure it out. And so when that happened, I was kind of like, well, what do I like? (laughs) So it took some years of fumbling and bumbling to figure it out. And you throw in, you know, peer pressure and trends and stuff that might not be accessible and it kind of can get harder. But I always had a love for fashion. All of my family members, they love to get dressed and so kind of growing up just being inspired by them and um being able to make fashion my own thing kind of helped so you're a you know like you said midwestern girl kansas city is really just kind of a blue collar midwestern city and you tell everyone i'm gonna go to fashion school i'm gonna go to art institute and study fashion how did your family and friends react to that you know what i think it helped a lot i tell people I I think it helped a lot that I was the last kid so by the time I said I'm going to art school I think my parents was like all right that's fine whatever Uh, (laughs) to be honest I would the plan was to go to school for journalism and work within the fashion industry in that part um my 17 year old brain was just kind of like well the art school applications are really hard and the portfolio is really hard so if I make it through that process it must it's meant to be I should go to art school and that was my approach <laughs> and it worked out thankfully. Um, so there was not really a huge surprise because I kind of knew I would be a artist of some type. It was just kind of one of those things like which one would she pick? Everybody kind of had their money on me going into writing though. Mm, makes sense. Do So from, you know, throughout school and you're graduating um, college, does it ever occur to you to move to a larger city that has more fashion opportunities or did you always want to stay in KC? Uh, you know what? 
it, it's not a cute answer, but I stayed in KC because that that was the most viable option. I graduated high school in 2008. So that's the start of that great big old recession and everything crashing. I graduated college in 2012. Things was not much better. Um, so I had a very honest and realistic view on what those kind of almost last formative years could look like. And if I made the wrong choice, <laughs> it could end up affecting the business that I knew I wanted to create. Um, so it was very unsexy to stay in KC. Um, but I figured out a way to make it work for me and just had the confidence that it would work out. Mm -hmm. And what was that journey like from graduation to launching your own label? I'm sure it was a whole journey. How did you get from point A to point B? And, you know, those last kind of two years of college, I was just like, this is my last little bit of safety net. What can I do right now to make that transition that transition easier when I graduate? Um, so when I graduated, I was retailing consignment in two stores. I was on my way to Casey Fashion Week, St. Louis Fashion Week. So I was doing projects and work that would help me move ahead. Um, but, you know, you got to get a job. So <laughs> there's not a lot of there was not a lot of fashion jobs then. There's a little bit more now as more independent designers kind of set up their studios and their brands. Um, so I worked at a dance studio. I do not dance. Don't ask me. Um, I was a studio manager, but it was so nice. I will say being in KC was very nice. All of, Most of my jobs, I worked for small business owners. I worked for women-owned small businesses. And I talked to them a lot about my dreams and my desires and what I wanted to know and what I needed to learn. And they helped me, you know, these are the things you need to file with the city. These are the types of permits you need. This is how to use QuickBooks. You know, it was I was working a regular little jobby job, but I got to kind of fill in that entrepreneurial education because you don't get that when you go to fine art school, newsflash. But um, it was nice. I worked at the dance studio for years and, you know, I got I add professional bow maker and rhinestoner to my resume because of that, because those costumes are no joke. <laughs> and I have to know, did you learn to dance while you were there? No, absolutely oh! not. <laughs> Absolutely not. But the kids loved me. Um, you know, I I would dress fun and crazy every day. I got to pick out the themes for recitals. I would do, you know, design stuff and design the props. So it was still a very creative job. But I performing arts, I learned very early was not my lane. <laughs> That's awesome. So as a creative that runs a business, has the business side do you, do you like it at all now? Or is it still like just the means to an end to, to do the creative stuff? That's so funny that you asked me that question today when I have literally been sweating bullets for the last three days doing pricing for work. I literally just text my mom like, I hate this. I'm not having fun. This is the worst part of my job. Um, I think the blessed thing is that I am naturally as creative as I am. I'm also analytical. So a lot of it comes easy to me. And growing up, I have family members that had businesses as well. Um, so you kind of learn on the spot. I definitely knew very early because I wasn't getting that business education during college, I needed to make up. So I would do as many workshops as I could, Kaufman Fast Track, Artist Inc., stuff like that, that would help me learn quickly. Because in a weird way, I felt like I wasn't hireable because I didn't go through a traditional fashion program. And that was also motivation for me to start WM as well, to employ myself. Yeah, yeah. And so where is WM at today? Where? How do you sell? What, what are you making? What, what are you working on? All that good stuff. I, I am really astonished at the growth. Uh, some of the things we've been able to do, I would have never guessed. It. I would have had the opportunities. Um, so right now I have a studio space in Westside, KC. Um, so I'm near like Southwest Boulevard, just a little bit outside of Crossroads. I've been doing so much production work. So stuff for TV, um, commercials, that's been incredibly fun. Um, I have an online shop. Don't go check it right this second, y'all, because <laughs> it's been it's been a busy year so far. <laughs> but, you know, online shop, um, wholesaling to other independent retailers. Um, my work is at the like Kemper gift shop. Uh, World War One Museum gift shop. Like it's always fun to work with uh, local spaces as well. And then you know, every now and then I get those crazy custom requests. <laughs> 
what have you had any like, uh, well, I know one answer to this, but have you had any like wow moments when someone reached out to you and wants you to create something and you're like, oh, like starstruck and excited? I think my first starstruck project was uh, Bel Air. That was 2021. The second one was uh, Design the Entrance Look for Monica Beverly Hills uh, for RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. That was like mind blowing because this is a show that I have been a faithful fan of since day one. Uh, follow up with that, the most recent project, um, working with the Royals. But also, I worked with ASAP Rocky when he was here. He did the music video shoot. I met him in person. No! Like, I sat right... I was sitting right next to him. Like, shoulder to shoulder. It was crazy. Oh, my gosh. What was your role? Were you designing for him or for... It was... They they had another project going on simultaneously. So, I helped with some uh, fabrication. Not for the uh, music video, but, like, prototyping for another project they were working on while they were here. That is so exciting. I want to come. I want to come back to the Royals, but before we go there, Kansas City's having such a moment. Like ASAP Rocky is here shooting a music video. What What is it like to be in the world that you're in as Kansas City has become such a cultural hotspot, seemingly out of nowhere? Yeah, it, in a way, it kind of feels like such a told you so moment because all of those years of you need to move, you need to move, and I'm like, no, there is a good reason for me to be KC based. I'm not necessarily, I always tell people I'm not a local artist. I'm a Kansas City based artist. There's a mindset difference of that. And because of that mindset difference, I've been able to work with ASAP, Monica, Bel Air, the Royals, Wendy's, Jose Cuervo. Like I've been able to do these big projects because I'm ready and I'm here. A national artist based out of Kansas City. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's such a, you know, it's so interesting how like just the little mindset can make such a big difference. That is so cool. So with the Royals, how did that come about? Uh, are you a sports fan even? Or did this really push you outside of your comfort zone? What What was that whole process like? I am definitely a sports fan. I will say baseball, I don't get it. The rules, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm, I'm gonna be very honest. I, I'm like, I'm there. I'm having a good time. I'm having snacks. I'm looking cute. That's literally like, I'm there, but uh, I have no idea what's going on as far as gameplay and like top of the end about like, what does this mean? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm, but, but I am a sports fan, so don't judge me. But um, there for the vibes, there for the vibes, there for the hometown team. But um, I, I actually, my first kind of interaction with the Royals in a professional sense was in 2022 when they introduced the City Connect jerseys. I was in the commercial for that. Okay. And so they remembered me from then and just, they literally emailed me. So <laughs> people have asked, how did I get the job? I don't have like a good, like, here's what you should do. I just think they kind of paid attention. They enjoyed what I did for the commercial and they reached back out. Yeah, here's how you get it. You get booked for a commercial. You be really charming and charismatic. You leave a big impression. And then they yeah, remember. Yeah. But you ne you never know when people are paying attention. Um, I could have kind of threw that off to the side. Like, oh, this is nothing serious, whatever. But, you know, just always put your best foot forward. Always, even when you are, don't feel like you have a project, always make sure you are doing like, work you're working you're showing up somehow in the public or on your social media platforms you just always got to be kind of self-producing mm -hmm. yeah have you thought about tackling the chiefs or trying to get in that realm and get hey, something on listen. taylor <laughs> uh very quick Kansas city chiefs current sporting kc who am i missing mavericks um, you say mavericks hockey, hockey. Uh, i'm available <laughs> call her call her call up me, for real i got y'all i seriously got y'all i would love to work with casey current specifically i mean you know do it for the girls so yeah i, I was just gonna say that's a match made in heaven that's I gotta think that's happen. a match made in heaven also with the chiefs do you know for years and i if i could find this tweet i probably tweeted this back in like 2014 2016 around that time i would love to design for the chiefs cheerleaders wouldn't that be fly? I was a junior CC back in 2002. I still have the pictures. So 
<laughs> it would be a full circle moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be yes. so, they need that too. Okay. Right. We're going to work on this. We're going to okay. work on this. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we're going to work on this. That's my angle for the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then Taylor Swift happens to see their outfit and wants one for herself. Then like, you know. Whatever y'all feel like doing. So I, I, I got the plan. I just need the platform. <laughs> that is incredible. So where do you see your business going? What's your goal over the next year, five years, 10 years? Are you going to grow a team? What's, what's your plan over there? Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. I have even when I have worked two, three part-time jobs at a time, I've always been a full-time artist. I would always manage to clock 30 to 40 hours a week at studio. The blessed thing is that 2020 forced me to be just a full-time artist <laughs> and it's been working out ever since. <laughs> Everything has been very organic as well as having those plans. I have one team member right now and I actually just recently went to a work conference and kind of identified like, okay, it might be time almost to hire a second person. And what does that look like? And that feels kind of scary. But, you know, being able to expand, even with the Royals project, I was able to hire 12 women to help me bring that project to life, which is so amazing. You know, to be able to have the budget and the space and the time to bring other creatives in is, I, I'm very proud of that. And so, yeah, so to be able to kind of keep getting these high visibility projects to where I can keep kind of like, working with my friends is some, definitely something. Um, we're about to expand my studio space, which is crazy. Uh, moving an art studio is no joke, y'all. I don't, moving sucks in general, but I think it's 10 times worse for an art studio because how do you pack paint <laughs> and fabric dye? You know, <laughs> like how do you safely do that? So we're gearing up for that to happen uh, mid-summer this year, um, pushing different products uh, that I have into small batch manufacturing, like in New York. So that's exciting. That's such a huge step. Um, and just kind of keeping it up, you know, keep keeping up the good work. I, I think I think I'm on a good steady path right now. Yeah, clearly you are. Um, what has your experience been like as a woman of color in the fashion industry? Has that been a challenge? Fashion, honestly, when you kind of get higher in the ranks as far as like who is at the table and who is making decisions first and foremost it's very male dominated really still yes and we're the consumer um so as an independent designer i really like having my audience kind of experience as much of the behind the scenes as possible so they see how many decisions it takes to just get to that final product because it's no joke you really do have to be your own ambassador. You have to speak up for yourself and you have to get comfortable with that very early. Like boundaries are so strict and so serious. I have walked into meetings and it's like, oh, you're the assistant or you're the model. You're not. And sometimes that still happens. You know, they don't think that I'm the boss. Like, no, I'm Whitney. I'm the girl you need to be talking to and that you need to wow with your presentation. Like, <laughs> so it feels a little scary in it and until you feel just it's automatically comfortable and confident you kind of got to fake it until you make it um and also kind of avoiding I think unfortunately minority artists we kind of are expected to make a certain type of work um our work that speaks to certain experiences that's popular within our specific communities and for me I want to expand people's mindset of what black art is um and what it can be and that's a lot to take on um but as long as i'm proud of what is coming out of this studio every day i'm i'm happy to do it yeah and deal with the rest this is how uh you know i, I don't know maybe naive i am because i'm not part of the fashion community but i thought you were going to be like you know, it's really diverse and accepting. And like, this is a, where the creatives are. Like, you know, like I, that is so crazy to hear. It's, and, 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 and even then you have to add on the lens of being in Missouri, being in Kansas City. It, you know, a lot of things, a lot of times it's like, we don't know what's happening on all sides. Fashion, the fashion industry in Kansas City to me is still very young. So there's some, I won't say gatekeepers. I might get in trouble for that, but people know I'm going to say what I feel like. There's some gatekeepers here. Um, and I think it, there could be a better like aerial view of who is in the fashion industry here and that we're making sure 
that everybody knows of the opportunities that exist and give people a chance. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I feel like the Kansas City Fashion Week is pretty young too, right? I mean, it's still pretty young. When when you think, especially in comparison to the other arts communities here, it's very young, very young. Yeah, makes sense for sure. Um, Okay, so last couple questions I ask everyone that comes on the show. Uh, first one is what is a great meal you've had out and about in Kansas city recently? You know what? Shout out. This is my, my favorite place. Actually on Friday, I having a great time. I love going to Baru off of Warnell and, um, the goon roll Hi team at Baru. If you want to sponsor me, uh, <laughs> I love a goon roll, uh, and the loaded fried rice. That was like my most recent local meal that I had a good time with and the uh when I got me a pint of brown butter pecan ice cream at Betty Ray's Ooh, oh okay I think you just gave us like a, a Kansas City themed death row meal like this this every course like yes because by the time I got to Friday night when I tell you I was through I was cooked I'm like I just need I need what I know you know when when it's like you're hungry and you're just like I need what I know works best Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. Yeah. No, oldie but a good eight. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. Um, okay. Last question here is where can people find you? And what services do you offer if someone wants a custom piece? Can they reach out to you for that? Like what do you got going on? Yes, I got a I got a whole a lot going on. So um as far as direct to consumer, check me out online with com. My online shop is up. I have, if you're local to KC, I have work available for retail at 21C Hotel, Kemper Art Museum, and the World War I Museum gift shops. Um, every now and then I do pop-ups if I'm feeling it. I'm semi-retired, you know. The cranky old artist. Sometimes I'm like, I don't feel like being in public. But um, yeah, and if you have, I am working on doing uh, virtual fittings, so that should be up and running soon. So that way, if you have questions about how a piece fits, we can do measurements uh, virtually and fit-ins and stuff. So I'm really excited about that. B2B-wise, you know, I do um, a lot of licensing work for like textile designs and merch design. I really love doing merch design. I also, I'm going to put this out there in the universe. I would love to do a merch design suite for a female musician in KC. So just putting that out there. Um, and you know, other like brand collabs, um, I do a lot of content creation, but yeah, you know, I'm most active on Instagram and TikTok at Whitney Manny, um, when the algorithm favors me. (laughs) Just depends on the day. Depends depends on the day. day. Yeah. 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 I love it. Awesome. Well, Whitney, thank you for, you know, being bold enough to put your art out in the world and especially in a place like Kansas city where we need more of that. So uh, it's a it's a noble pursuit, and I can't wait to watch you grow and thrive. And I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Yep. Guys, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.